guys, it's me, I'm alive. Can you believe it? Um, I've been meaning to post a video, as always, and tonight I was just in the video posting mood and had all these things on my mind, and I just kind of want to share them with you guys and see if anybody can relate and um, maybe even give me some advice. First, let me give you some updates. You might notice that I'm in a brand new place. We finally moved, and um, we couldn't be more happy with this house. We don't have any breathing issues. It's really wheelchair accessible, um, and it's beautiful, and we love it, and our landlord's fantastic. And it was basically like a miracle that came to us out of nowhere because uh, that move was really stressful. And I think, uh, I think during Dustin's last video, we were kind of in the midst of all of that and we hadn't found the house yet. We were both wondering where we were gonna go and where we were gonna end up. We thought we might have to go back to New Jersey and that would have been really hard trying to travel as sick as we were. Um, so this house was just this unbelievable blessing that came to us out of nowhere. And gosh, I was in the shower crying one night saying, God, please just help us find a place that we can be comfortable in and start feeling like we're home in because we were sleeping on the living room floor and because I was allergic to the bedrooms because that's where the cats had lived and um, having some a lot of issues with the house that made it feel like we were already far from family and far from home but it made us feel even further away because we didn't even have a bedroom you know we were it felt so temporary and now we're in this place that you know still a little bit temporary not sure where we're gonna end up for good but um, it's more permanent and it makes us feel like we can kind of relax and just say that we're home and really start living life again. Um, so that's that. And then um, since our move, it's been a lot of ups and downs, um, mainly with our health. And we've been a bit like a seesaw. It seems like one of us gets sick and then the other takes care of that person and they get sick. and. We do this back and forth that we're hoping we can slowly get a handle on um, because living as a chronically ill couple if it's taught us anything it's it's taught us the value and balance it's like we have to find this balance every day and every week in order just for both of us to always be as healthy as we can be so that means when one of us is sick and the other wants to be a superhero and do everything that maybe we have to realize that we're fragile and neither of us are really superheroes um, and that we have to just do what we can and and not overdo it and there's always there's always a fine line um, and it's a line that doesn't seem to exist when you want to help somebody you love um, for example I had a really bad month back in October and to sum it up, I've always had stomach issues my whole life since I was a little girl. When I was diagnosed with POTS, I assumed that they just went along with the autonomic issues, but it turns out that I have ulcerative colitis. Who knew? So basically what happened was I was in a lot of pain. All of a sudden, I kind of woke up one day with really bad stomach cramps, and I was running back, into the, back and forth to the bathroom like 20 times a day. And then I noticed I was bleeding a lot. Um, I started losing a lot of blood and we had to go to the hospital. And sure enough, they gave me a colonoscopy and diagnosed me with ulcerative colitis. And on one hand, it didn't really surprise me. On the other hand, I felt like, what else? <laughs> like, did I get bad genes or what? Um, so I was really frightened because the doctor, as always, didn't really have any bedside manner and basically told me that it could lead to cancer, which, you know, I needed to know, um, and that I might have to get my colon removed and that mine was really severe and my entire colon, which I didn't know, is like four or five feet long or something crazy like that. And she said the whole thing was inflamed. And she said, you've been walking around with this inflamed colon, no wonder you feel terrible all the time. I cried and I basically told her, well, every day I pretty much feel like I'm malnourished. I feel like no matter how much I eat, I just I have no strength. And she said that I'm basically not digesting anything. So that explains a lot of my symptoms. Wasn't what I wanted to hear though. 
Um, and during this time, like, I was petrified, scared to death, laying in bed, couldn't sleep at night in the hospital, and um, feeling really pretty much like I wanted to give up. I was thinking, I've got so much going against me. I've got this POTS diagnosis and ovarian failure, you know, which is so complicated in itself. Um, and then I've got, I'm being treated for adrenal insufficiency, and now I've got ulcerative colitis, what next? And um, I looked at Dustin, and he was, as always, being a superhero for me, and never left my side the entire time I was there. And I couldn't have done it without him. And I, I know that's cliche, and everybody says that in a relationship, but I could not physically have gotten through this without him. Um, I wasn't even myself. I was just crying so hard and I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I just give up. Like what does God or whoever is doing this to me, what do they want? I was just suffering. I was in so much pain and I was so weak and I couldn't eat anything. So I lost about 10 pounds in two weeks and then about five pounds after that. And it was pretty fast and pretty scary. And I felt like I was just dwindling away. Um, and then, like I said to myself one night as I was laying there, and Dustin was laying next to me, and I was thinking, just going through my mind and not to get into religious talk here, but I was thinking, you know, God doesn't exist, and life is meaningless, and I, I just felt hopeless. And then I looked at Dustin, and he was sound asleep, all like scrunched up, trying to fit in bed with me, and I thought, how could something so amazing, something that's clearly a miracle, happen to me? And it could have happened to anybody, and it happened to me um, during a time when I really needed it to happen. And yet all of these awful things can just fall around, around us. Um, and I just had to kind of back up and say, well, Gosh, some people, everybody's got a problem. Some people have financial problems and some people have marital problems and some people have family problems and some people have emotional problems and other people have health problems. But I guess if I had to, if I had an option and I could give one of these problems away, but I couldn't keep Dustin, I'd keep all my problems. Um, and that's the truth of it. It's like, um, Dustin and I were, were given a pretty tough life and there are challenges and obstacles that we face every day and right now he's, he's really sick and he's in bed and um, I'm taking care of him and I know he'll be doing better soon but it's tough and we've had, of course, you know, just last month it was me and he was taking care of me and we look at each other sometimes and we're like, when is it going to stop? When are things just going to settle? And when do we get to live our dreams? Because when you get sick, your dreams don't change. You still, you still dream as big as you did before you were sick. And we have dreams of, you know, having our own business and being financially independent and traveling and just being 20, being 26 and 25 years old, just being young. And we feel robbed of our youth sometimes, and often we feel like we can't be spontaneous and we can't be who we are, and there's all these things that go through our minds on the days that we're stuck in bed watching The Big Bang Theory or The Office, and as fun as that is, we look at each other and, and not only do we feel bad, and not only do we feel bad individually that we can't have the life we want, but we feel bad for each other. And, on a day goes by that I don't look at him and think, oh my God, he deserves the greatest life in the world, a life I couldn't possibly give him. Um, and not just because he's sick, but because I'm sick too. And, you know, just because we're both sick doesn't mean that we don't go through periods of time where we feel like we hold each other back or like we feel like we're a burden to one another and we still... It's interesting how we could be so knowledgeable about each other's conditions and so empathetic because we both feel the same way. Yet in times where one of us is sick, like last month when I had the colitis, 
I just kept looking at him thinking, what is he doing with me? And feeling so worthless and so helpless and so useless. And all these things just run through your mind and you don't feel good about yourself because you can't because you physically feel like a mess. And you say to yourself, who would want to be around me? And then there's this person who just does. And there's nothing, there's no reason. It's not because I, you know, it's not because I'm the life of the party or because I have this great social life and the two of us have that and it's not because I have a great job or um, any of those things. It's just because me and he loves me when I'm in bed and I can't get up. And he loves me when I'm so sick that I can't even hold a good conversation. And he loves me when maybe he wants to get out and do something and I'm not up for it. Um, or when we're at the grocery store and I have to sit down or go to the car. And he loves me when I do stupid stuff, like bake him a birthday cake and it turns out wrong and I throw it in the trash all sad. <laughs> um, he just loves me and I just love him. And at the end of the day, we might get stressed out and we might say, what's what does the future hold for two people like us, realistically? Where are we going to be? I mean, the social worker at the hospital, it's funny actually, she came into my room and I said, are there any programs like home health care for people like us because we're both chronically ill and I don't want all of this to be put on dust and I want him to be able to take care of himself and I, I didn't know how I was going to be doing. And, I didn't want that weight to be on his shoulders. And she pretty bluntly told me that there aren't any programs for people our age, um, but there was always the option of a group home. And I was sitting there thinking, I can't believe somebody would suggest a group home to us because there are some days where we're so functional and we do great and we're normal. And then we have these days where we're both so sick and you know it's scary and it's frightening and we feel like we need help but gosh to be 26 years old and have somebody suggest a group home no way not gonna happen um so i went home and like i always do i went on google and i looked up ulcerative colitis and sure enough i found a group of people a large large group of people who have gone on a diet called the specific carbohydrate diet and this diet is basically no sugar, no gluten, very low carbs. And I'll rush ahead and tell you that it has changed my life, like in a very short matter of time. Um, I followed it exactly. And just eating, going back to basics, eating very naturally. Um, and instantly the cramping subsided, the blood subsided, the running to the bathroom subsided. And I still have a ways to go. Things are not as perfect as they should be, but I don't feel like I'm in a danger zone anymore. And I was proud to go to my GI doctor and say, hey, I'm doing this diet and I'm taking some supplements and guess what? No problems. Um, and he wanted to give me a prescription and I still have a lot to think about um, with this diagnosis and what to do about it. But I feel so hopeful that I have a grasp on it now and it just gave me this renewed sense of, you know what, things are going to be okay and I can just rise above this and continue to be my own advocate and um, take care of myself the best way I know how and that's naturally. Um, so we've been keeping a blog about our diet and I'm going to post that to share it with you guys because Dustin's been doing it too and he's seen some good results. There's been setbacks for both of us. But um, we really believe in this, and we really think that it's going to make a world of a difference. And we're living in the best place for it because we're surrounded by farms and places where we can get organic and all natural produce and meat. And it's, it's been a lot of fun just exploring that and creating this whole new lifestyle. And we both love to cook, so that's been a blast. We're going to start posting some cooking videos soon, too. Um, so that'll be fun. But I'm going to go because you probably noticed my throat. I've had the flu. I forgot to tell you guys that. And um, my throat's killing me. But I just want
wanted to update you guys and share that with you. And I want you to know that I know a lot of us feel guilty for the things that we can't do, for the things that we do because we're sick. And the times that we have to cancel on people, all of this yuckiness that comes along with just being sick and tired and tired and sick. Um, but I want you to know that true love, and I don't just mean with a relationship, I mean your mother, your father, your family, your sisters, um, your friends, maybe not all of them have loved you as truly and as wholeheartedly as they should. And maybe you've had times where you've been hurt because you've been sick and you weren't able to be as normal as somebody wanted you to be. And maybe you feel this pressure all the time just to be something that you can't physically be. And maybe people around you are just dwindling and you're losing friends and you're losing hope. And maybe you have somebody like Dustin in your life who loves you anyway. And if you do, hold on to that and think about it in your worst of moments. And remember that that person loves you no matter what. They don't love you despite your illness. They love you, love you. And that's it. And if you don't have somebody like that in your life, and I know that place because I was in it a year ago, um, but if you're lonely and you feel like everybody's just dropping like flies around you and nobody's supporting you, um, know first of all that love and happiness, all of those wonderful things, all those wonderful things are still in the cards for you and that you deserve it. And you just keep pushing yourself and keep broadening your life until you find, until you find it. And in the meantime, the people who don't treat you the way that they should, the people who don't love you unconditionally, don't waste your time. You love you. Um, just love yourself and remember that true love doesn't require you to be anything or do anything to be loved. It just requires you just to be. And I'm going to remember that too when I feel like I'm not enough some days because I know that I am and I know Dustin loves me just as much as I love him and in the same way. And I love him. I love him because I love him. And he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to say anything. He doesn't have to be anything. It's a feeling that won't ever go away because it's there and it's because it, he's who he is. And somebody's going to love you like that. And hopefully a lot of people already do. And like I said, if they don't, it has nothing to do with you. Nothing. You just keep being you and you just keep loving and you keep being happy and staying positive and being strong and eventually it's gonna eventually somebody's gonna see that in you and they're gonna fall in love with it. And then everything's gonna be okay. I love you guys. I promise I'll update more soon.